I'll call the Finance Committee meeting to order at uh, 712. It was originally scheduled for 640. Uh, anyway, Tom Barney here. is here. Uh, Ray Borden is absent, excused, and our, uh, what do you call yourself uh, for this instance? Ad hoc. Ad hoc uh, representative is our board president. Uh, Brian Medved is here. And I'm here, Michael Loth. Okay, um, agenda revisions and approval. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Okay, motion by Tom, second by Brian. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. Okay, approve the July 19th, 2021 meeting minutes. So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Tom, second by Brian. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. Uh, item five, consent review and discuss July vouchers. I know there's one question. Um, I received um, one question from two individuals. So I will answer that. It is regarding a purchase of $17,500 um, for Aptigy Inc. Um, it's for communications and marketing. Um, the questions were regarding um, one, the dollar amount, and two, what is the system being used for? Um, the first question, the dollar amount, $17,500, should it have came to finance committee? The answer is probably yes, it should have. Um, one of the reasons it didn't, which it should have again, is because it is replacing um, three or four systems, which were at a higher cost dollar amount, so we're actually saving money moving to this system. Um, it is replacing Blackboard, CMS for Schools, and MailChimp, among maybe some other things. So the total of those three things were approximately $19,000, and the, um, the Aptigy does all that into one system, which is $17,500. So it should have came to committee, um, but again, it was just a replacement, so I guess it, it got missed. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I didn't have anything else. I make a motion to consent to payment vouchers as presented and reviewed. Second. Okay, motion by Tom, second by Brian. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, uh, item 6A, uh, final 2020-2021 year end variance report. And I know Brittany's really just been dying to deliver this one to us, right? I am. I'm very, Go ahead. very excited yours. about this. Um, so uh, I brought this uh, report to the board. I do monthly. So it did come um, uh, the previous month to finance, but um, because our year wasn't closed out, I wanted to bring it back. Um, we might have slight changes due to our audit is going on um, this week, but nothing that would be an alarming to the board. It would just be slight changes that they would request. Um, so what has changed since the last report out? Um, in revenue side, we did do our final claim. So we received our final claims for our state and federal grants. Um, we did receive our mobile home tax fees, and then we also did our final 27, um, fund 27 or special education transfer. As you know, we move money from the general fund to cover the special ed fund, and you have to do that once all expenses are put in revenue are put in place. So that was another um, dollar amount that was transferred um, since the last report, which is about $5 million. And then um, on the expense side, um, the only adjustment was uh, reconciliation that we do for our self-funded dental. We move to self-funded dental, so if our claims for our dental are lower than our budget or our expenditures, we get to credit our expenses back. Um, if they are higher, you then would charge our expenses. So it is um, a positive, at least right now for dental and maybe we if we move towards that direction for health um, that you usually see um, a credit go back into your accounts so that will happen at the end of every year for dental and if we move to health self-funded it would also happen at the end of the year for um, health insurance uh, we did end our year um, expending in 2000, um, sorry, in um, Fund 10 and Fund 27, which is our general fund and our special ed fund, is which are the two funds we review, um, spending 
thousand sixty eight dollars and ninety one cents and we did receive $55,539,344.72. Um, that leaves us with a surplus at the end of the year of $630,000. It's a little less than that, but rounding up to $630,000. Some of those were under, not in our control, and some of those we strategically did to help us out um, in the future. Some of the items that were not under our control were um, we have unspent dollars due to delayed parts or services due to COVID-19. So for example, um, the track, that was an example on how it got delayed because they did not have people to do the work. That's just one example. But there was some items we have on back order that we couldn't expend and there's some services that didn't happen due to um, staffing issues. Um, we did move some of our um, expenses to ESSER dollars, so instructional software, some technologies, um, our mitigation equipment, some transportation, and some staff. We, we got to move out of our general fund and our fund 27 special ed fund into the ESSER dollars, so that saved us some dollars of normal expenses that we'd have. Um, we had some reduced expenses due to a declining in our student enrollment. For example, if a student um, received services such as nursing services, a one-on-one -on -one nursing services, and they were decided to be at home this past year, we did not have that expense. So due to some students not attending um, the school last year, we did not have some of those expenses. And then um, finally, uh, maximizing our state and federal grants. This is one's a little confusing. Uh, we have maintenance of effort, which I'm sure you've heard of. That means that we have to spend an equal amount percentage wise on special ed students and regular ed students. So we can't spend a whole bunch of money on regular ed students and not spend money on special ed students, if that makes sense. Each year we have to go into the DPI website and we, do a, we enter in all our information and um, we have to pass one of four tests for them. And if you pass one of the four tests, then you get funding the following year. If you don't pass one of the four tests, you have to correct it, you can lose funding, and then you move forward. To be able to reduce funding in special education, you have to have an exemption, or exception, sorry, an exception. An exception could be staff leaving on their own and not being replaced. It could be staff leaving and being replaced with somebody at a lesser cost. It could be a declining in, in student enrollment. If you enter one of those things, you can get an exception on your um, MOE test. So knowing that in 2020-21, looking into 21-22, we were gonna have a deficit, we strategically moved some of the cost for Fund 27 into the CARES dollars, and we moved some of the Fund 27 costs into um, federal and state grants, which then reduced our transfer we had to move from Fund 10 to 27. The only reason we were able to do that this year, this past year, is because we had a decline enrollment and we got that exception. The exception was for $704,000. We did not reduce special ed budget by that much, but we reduced it to an appropriate amount knowing that we'd have to reduce regular education expenses in 21-22. So by reducing those in 2021 for special ed, it rolls over to the next year. So that's one of the strategic ways that we reduced our cost to help our expenses in the future, but that's why you see part of the $630,000 surplus. Any questions? <laughs> I just want everybody to know, sitting in the audience here, she's not reading from notes. You know, she's doing this from memory, so she actually knows what she's talking about. Okay, uh, Bob. I just wanna thank you. Uh, it's nice to have a leader um, that has the vision uh, and that puts a plan together and that executes the plan. So thank you for doing this, it's wonderful. Thank you. But I do have a question. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that um, we do have the auditors auditing us. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, going back several years, at least I would get an email or a letter from the, from the auditors stating if there's any concerns that I have as a board member or as a board president at that time. And I don't know if my colleagues on the board ever received that but I didn't get anything this year. Uh, not saying that I should, but, uh, and I have no concerns or issues or any things like that, but 
there must have been a change in the process. So. And, and I don't know in the past if they sent it to all of the board members or if they randomly selected them. They randomly select stuff on our end, so they might do that as well, or they okay. might just pick certain um, seats. Got it. I can tell you that I had a phone call. Oh, cool. So Great. There was communication. Wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have not received anything this year, but normally I, I receive one every year, so I think I, I don't... I don't get an exemption from that. <laughs> they, they complete the audit through the month of December, so maybe they're not to that part, or maybe they just thought Amanda was enough to reach out to. But I'll follow up with them. We all know I am. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Brittany. I, I'm, I'm not going to repeat all of that in the full board meeting, but uh, I will mention the, uh, the bottom line I think which is the uh, surplus of six hundred and thirty thousand uh, dollars which is good of course um, that's not going to all go to a uh, fund balance there's a, a few things that will uh, draw on that money yet but uh, I think we've got a little addition to the fund balance versus a uh, zero uh, so I think there's another guy sitting way in the back there that'll be happy about that with the initials uh, SH, I believe. <laughs> okay, um, that's it for that. And then um, I think we're on uh, item, well, item seven, there's no unfinished business. Uh, item eight, A, uh, district compartmentalization doors. Don already covered it, but it, now hits uh, finance. Sure. Uh, so uh, Don went over this in um, the buildings building committee. So it is coming to finance and then going to full board if it's approved by finance. Um, if you want me to go into detail, I'm more than welcome to. Otherwise, the dollar amount that we are asking to be approved would not exceed $23,961 to make sure that our compartmentalization doors um, <laughs> work appropriately when we have uh, lockdowns and fire um, drills. Correct. Um, we'll take a motion. I'll make a motion to move forward with a positive recommendation to the full board to award Stanley Security a contract not to exceed $23,961 funded from the Buildings and Grounds Department Fund 10 budget to rewire the car compartmentalization doors on the fire alarm system to work independently with the access control system. Second. Okay, motion by Tom, second by Brian. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. And then we've got uh, item 8A, B, uh, Schoolology Learning Management System. Sure, I'm going to turn it over Justin, to Justin Baumgarter in technology, and he can go through the details with you. Okay, Justin, thank you. Thank you. Uh, typically, this is a yearly purchase for our Schoology Learning Management System that we started when we had our one-to-one -one, uh, Chromebook program. This year is a little bit different. We got a COVID-19 Digital Learning Bridge uh, voucher that uh, we've decided to put towards this particular amount. So the Schoology um, subscription cost is $30,715.05, and we would be applying our digital learning bridge voucher of $4,276, which brings our final cost down to $26,439.05. Okay, um, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to bring forward to the Board of Education with a positive recommendation to purchase Schoology Learning Management Services for an amount not to exceed $26,439.05. Second. Okay, motion by Tom, second by Brian. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. And um, I'll accept another motion. Move we adjourn. Second. Motion by Tom, second by Brian. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 This motion is, or this uh, meeting is adjourned at 726.